Not every archaeological discovery has a story to go with it, but the best of them do. The best discoveries serve as windows into the past, allowing us to catch a glimpse of places and people that are long gone. All the discoveries you're about to see in this video meet that criteria. They're mysterious and they're incredible, but they're all real. The mountains of Oppland in Norway are melting, and as they do, they're giving up objects that have been covered in snow and ice for centuries. In April 2022, archaeologists scouring the mountains came across a perfectly preserved Iron Age sandal on what's left of the horse ice patch. It was found with an as yet unidentified fragment of another textile, arrow shafts, lead fodder, and ancient horse dung. It's highly likely that this part of the ice patch was a mountain pass during the Iron Age. That theory has all but been confirmed by the discovery of several stone cairns along what would have been the optimum route through the mountains. The shoe is the most personal of the items recovered from the region so far, and was likely made somewhere between the 2nd and 5th centuries. Experts say the footwear is of the Carabatina type, made from a single piece of leather laced through hoops positioned over the bridge of the foot. What's odd is that it was recovered from a height of more than 6,000 feet above sea level in a place that would have been covered in ice even back then. Who on earth thought that shoes like this one were appropriate footwear for traversing glaciers? An enormous Hanseatic League ship was found close to the Estonian capital city of Tallinn in April 2022. This has always been an excellent place to look for old ships, as Tallinn port is one of Northern Europe's oldest and was once a vital trade center connecting Viking Scandinavia to Rurik Novgorod. It's clear that the coastline has changed a little since then though, as the 700-year-old ship was found beneath the modern city's streets. The location was once the mouth of the Harjapea River, but the river no longer exists. The League ship is the largest shipwreck of its kind ever discovered, and would once have been a cog ship working between Russia, Estonia, and England as part of a trade network. The Hanseatic League controlled the lion's share of maritime trade in this part of Europe during the medieval era and vessels like this one were the reason why. When the Danish King Valdemar VI tried to go to war with them and reclaim trade supremacy, the Hanseatic League humiliated him by forcing him to sign a peace treaty that gave the Danes even lower sea trade profits than they had before the war began. The entire ship will be removed and preserved, but the process could take years. In the 1960s, a priceless Mayan temple facade was stolen from the jungle in Mexico and shamelessly offered to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. As of June 2022, the piece is back in the hands of the Mexican Cultural Federal Bureau Instituto Nacional de Antropología y Historia, and they're restoring it in the hope that it might one day be possible to exhibit it to the public. The 30-foot-long stucco relief has been damaged during its years away, including the introduction of a polymer that was probably introduced by the traffickers in a fudged attempt to preserve it. The original material was damaged in the process, but the team working on the project hoped to salvage as much of the original frieze as possible. There's some debate over what the frieze represents. It might be the Mayan god of maize, but it could also be a portrait of a Mayan leader wearing his feathered headdress. Prior to being stolen from the jungle of Campeche in 1968, it's thought to have been buried deliberately by the Mayans, somewhere between the 5th and 6th centuries. The fact of burial probably had significance, but we have no idea what that significance might have been. Templo Mayor has already given us many fantastic ancient artifacts over the years, it was once the heart of a huge religious complex in the Aztec city of Tenochtitlan. What's left of it is now an archaeological site in Mexico City. Experts and archaeologists have been digging through the site for decades and will continue to do so for several decades more. But in June 2022, 
they confirmed the discovery of more than two and a half thousand wooden objects believed to have been left at the site as religious or ritual offerings. There's no set pattern to the objects. They include figurines, headdresses, masks, jars, earrings, and scepters, all of which were probably deposited by priests during the 14th century as a means of consecrating the Templo Mayor to the gods that the Aztecs believed in. It's rare for wooden objects to survive for so many centuries in such good condition, but in the case of these artifacts, it seemed they were preserved by a combination of the high level of humidity in the region and the anaerobic conditions in the soil. There are so many ancient wonders buried in the ground in Turkey that illegal digging has become a problem there. Smugglers dig up artifacts and then try to sell them on the black market. But if we're lucky, authorities pick the objects up before they're sold and recover them. That was the case with this stunning 1,800-year-old marble bathtub, which was recovered from the country's Karakasu district in April 2022. It's now in the hands of the Aphrodisius Museum Directorate. The bathtub, which is decorated with reliefs of a lion's head, is thought to be unique in Turkey because it's entirely made from marble. It weighs more than one ton and is just over six feet long. Historians have speculated that it may have belonged to a wealthy business person or state administrator. It's around 2,100 years old, dating back to a time when the people of Aphrodisius were extremely wealthy. The entire ancient city is on the UNESCO World Heritage List. The city had many public and social baths, but this one would have been contained within a private residence and would have been reserved for the use of whoever owned it. It will eventually go on display inside the museum that's taken ownership of it. When you left high school, college, or university, you were probably presented with a yearbook to mark the occasion. A few of your greatest quotes and achievements might even have made it into the yearbook. That tradition is older than you might imagine. In May 2022, what's been described as an ancient Greek graduation yearbook was discovered in Scotland. It's an inscription written on a marble tablet, and it's been stuck in a museum vault since the 1880s after being overlooked. Experts who've studied the inscription on its surface say it's a list of names of all the people who'd taken the Ephibic Oath in a certain year. The oath was taken by the young men of Athens as they enrolled in the city's military academy 2,000 years ago. It wasn't possible to become a full citizen of Athens with all the rights that come with citizenship without graduating from the academy. Records like these were presumably created so people who graduated could prove that they were entitled to their rights. There are 31 names on the list, all of whom probably enlisted and served together and would have been very well known to one another. In late 2019, a remarkable discovery was made in Tremousson, France. The area is thought to have once hosted a large country estate belonging to the elite of Gallic society between 2,400 and 2,100 years ago. Almost nothing of the estate is still visible today save for a well. At the bottom of the well, archaeologists discovered four Iron Age busts along with a wooden tripod banquet bucket. All of the items were deposited in the well deliberately, which suggests that they might have been a votive offering. That might explain why the items have fire damage, as fire may have played a role in whatever ceremony went along with their burial. Thankfully, the fire didn't do too much damage, so we can still see the fine details on the busts. They've been carved in a realistic style, which might indicate that they're representations of real people. One of the busts is of a man with cropped hair and a neat beard, who seems to be wearing a torque around his neck, which might mark him out as a leader. All of the items are now on display at the Musée de Bretagne in Brittany. Ninjutsu was a type of art, as well as a method of preparing guerrilla warfare in feudal Japan, and it may have started with this group of mysterious artifacts. They're relics from Toyotomi Hideyoshi's 1590 siege of Odawara. 
They may appear to you and us to be nothing more than sharpened stones, but specialists in Japanese history believe they could be prototype ninja weapons. The flat stones are particularly interesting since they could have been forerunners to shuriken throwing stars. Akihiro Iwata, an archaeologist and museum curator, says he has found parallels between these artifacts and weapons known to have been used roughly a century after the siege of Odawara. The flat stones aren't conclusive on their own, but they're accompanied by clay makibishi caltrops, which are. It's possible to dismiss one likeness as a coincidence, but it's more difficult to dismiss both. That isn't to imply that ninjas were there during the siege, but it is possible that the siege was the birthplace of ninjutsu. However, the version of ninjutsu that's so often seen in action movies and works of fiction today is largely a fabrication. In October 2021, Archaeologists found a beautiful lilac amethyst seal in Jerusalem. It would be a significant discovery regardless of the circumstances, but the experts think that one of the symbols engraved on the tiny ring might be a depiction of a type of balsam mentioned repeatedly in the Bible. If so, this is the first contemporary depiction of it ever to be found. The balsam tree, also known as Biblical Persimmon, is joined by a depiction of a bird that's most likely an ibis. According to records from the time, balsam was used in incense during the time of the Second Temple. We can't be sure of what it looks like because we have nothing to compare it to. Balsam and persimmon exist today, but the current orange persimmon fruit isn't related to the biblical kind, which was used in ointments and medicines as well as incense. There's a lot of guesswork involved here, but the archaeologists are as sure as they can be that the ring is about 2,000 years old, and as sure as they can be that it contains an image of a balsam tree. That might be as sure about biblical balsam as we're ever going to get. Although archaeologists abuse the phrase, find of a lifetime, it's still worth paying attention when one of them uses it. Let's look at the credentials of this prehistoric golden sun bowl, which was discovered in late September 2021 and described in such terms. The bowl is roughly 3,000 years old and was discovered near Ebreichsdorf, Austria. It is heavily deformed and fractured, but still has elaborate ornamental inscriptions. It's thought to come from an old Urnfield culture settlement. The object was discovered buried close to a prehistoric dwelling's wall and is notable for its sun motif pattern, which is assumed to depict the sun's rays. It's also exceedingly fragile, as it's composed of extremely thin sheet metal that has been determined to be 90% gold. Only about 30 gold bowls of this type have ever been discovered in Europe, and this is the first to be discovered in Austria. Scientists discovered remnants of organic material inside the bowl which they believe to be a gold thread sewn fabric, probably a ceremonial scarf worn during sun worshipping rites. The unusual object is currently on its way to a museum in Vienna. You'll probably find shipwrecks at the bottom of every body of water surrounded by humans, but Lake Erie in North America is home to more than most. After studying scans of the lake bed in October 2021, Archaeologists have published their findings. They now believe there to be more than 2,500 vessels at the bottom of the water. With so many ships detected, it would be tempting to believe that the wrecks date back a thousand years or more. But the experts are fairly sure that there were no vessels down there at all until the 18th century. That's an incredible number of ships to find their way to the bottom in just three centuries. The density of shipwrecks here is greater than the density of shipwrecks in the area known as the Bermuda Triangle, so perhaps those spooky stories should be focused on this part of the world instead. The oldest wreck in the water is said to be that of the Lake Serpent, a schooner that went down in 1829, but the identities of the majority of them aren't known. You'd expect the loss of a ship to be recorded somewhere by somebody but we know the identity of fewer than 1,000 of the lost vessels. 
We don't know much about the ancient tribes of the Baltics, but until recently it's generally been accepted that they were nomadic savages, little better than barbarians. Recent discoveries are forcing us to revise that view. Those discoveries have taken place inside the graves of the so-called Baltic Amber Elite in the Russian Sambia Peninsula. To the immense surprise of archaeologists, the graves are full of luxury imported goods. These people had a concept of material value, and it's to be assumed a concept of trade. The burial site appears to have been active between the 3rd and 8th centuries, which gives the archaeologists a time frame for their discoveries. The most luxurious of the finds date to the 4th and 5th centuries. Our impression of the Baltic tribes as savages comes from the records of the ancient Romans, but we now have to consider that the Romans were either twisting the truth or were simply as ignorant of the culture of the tribes as we are. Their graves contain items from Rome, Syria, Egypt, and Scandinavia, and in some cases also include gaming pieces, which are telltale signs of a highly developed culture. Maybe we should stop putting so much stock in the writings of Roman historians. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!